What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. So we have a car kind of driving at an angle, and it tells us the weight of the car is 4,000 pounds, and the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the ground is 0 0.4, and it wants us to find this maximum angle at which the car is no longer going to tilt. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're trying to find this theta angle, so we probably want a force body diagram. Uh, and if we're going to draw a force body diagram, we might as well make it uh, at a flat line to get as much everything uh, like linear as possible, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's go ahead and just sort of force by the diagram. So let's label this uh, A. This tire is A and this tire is B. So this is A and then this is B. So force normal is going to act perpendicular to the surface. So in A we're going to have it going straight up. So this is normal at A and this is normal at B. Right, and we tilted our graph, right? We have it here and we tilted it down onto here. So force gravity in this image would be going straight down, right? It would look like that. So it's going to have an angle here. So it's going to have this angle, which is also theta. Because if this is a 90 degree angle, then this angle is also going to be theta. So we can see relatively that this line is actually not going to be going straight, but it's going to be at an angle uh, pointing this way. Right? And it's theta, and it's theta here. And it's that theta. So this is the weight of the car. And so we're missing two things now. Uh, if we do some of the forces X, it's not gonna work out. So we have friction, right? So friction is opposing motion. So the car wants to slip down the hill, so the friction is gonna be pushing this way, at the normal, at the tires. So we're gonna have this friction of B, friction of A. All right, so here's a force body diagram. Now we basically just wanna figure out how much these frictions can be without slipping. So we need the sum of the forces in the x to be zero because the weight is gonna stay the same. The theta can change, but these frictions are always gonna be maxed out. So let's just figure that out now. So let's start with some of the forces in the y direction. So some of the forces in the y. So what do we have, right? We have two unknowns. We have normal A, normal B, and then friction at A and friction at B. And so these two are dependent upon each other, right? Because friction is a coefficient of friction times normal. So we have two unknowns, so we're gonna need at least two equations to solve this. So how about we start with some forces in the y? So all we have, right? Normal at A, plus normal at B, minus W, and then we're looking at the y direction, so it's gonna be cosine of theta, because it's adjacent, cosine of theta. And we're missing one thing, right? We have a car, so there's two tires on each side. There's two tires here and two tires here. So we gotta make sure to put uh, two in front of each one of these. So two normal of A plus two normal of B is equal to the weight of the car. So two unknowns, uh, how do we figure it out? Well, we don't yet, so we need another equation. So another equation might be some of the forces in the X direction. So let's add them up. So we have the friction at A, so it's gonna be two minus two to the friction at A. So you have two tires there, minus two friction at B, plus the weight of the car, sine of theta this time, because we're looking for the x direction, which is that, so it's gonna be opposite of sine of theta. So let's expand this equation now. Zero is equal to negative two. So friction at A is coefficient of static friction uh, times normal at A. Uh, and then so, uh, I guess this negative two can also be brought out. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, let's just keep it like this, so then it'll be minus this two, coefficient of static friction, normal at B, uh, plus W sine theta. And so now we have two unknowns and two equations, right? We don't know these two and we don't know these two, so we want to cancel them out, basically. So let's go ahead and try to cancel these out. So maybe let's try rearranging this equation, so it'll be zero is equal to, so let's bring up the coefficient of static friction this time, US, and let's bring out the negative sign. So it'll be two normal at A, plus two normal at B, plus W sine theta. All right, so let's go ahead and finish solving this. So if we look at what we have here, we have, oh, this marker's dead too. So two normal at A, and then two normal at A plus two normal at B. It's so dead, I can't believe it, I'm kind of frustrated. This marker's dead too. Okay. So what we can do is if we substitute this right into here, then we basically, all we have left is this theta and this theta. 
So that's how we want to do it. So let's try to get these, this by itself. So uh, if we rearrange this equation, just by moving the w cosine over, so w cosine of theta is equal to 2 normal at a plus 2 normal at b. So we have this 2 normal at a plus 2 normal at b, and we have it here too. So all we have to do is plug in w cosine of theta for this 2 normal at a plus 2 normal at b. So you're going to get that 0 is equal to negative coefficient of static friction, w cosine of theta, right? That's just what went in here, plus w sine of theta. So now all we have to do is simplify this. So let's bring up the w. So the w comes out, it'll be, this marker's dead too, are you serious? Negative coefficient of static friction, cosine of theta. I cannot believe this right now. They really set me up, huh? Maybe this marker will work. Cosine of theta plus sine of theta. Okay, well, that's good enough. All right, so then we can divide by w, so it'll be zero is equal to negative coefficient of static friction cosine of theta plus sine of theta. So this equation now is pretty simple to solve, so let's move one of these over. So coefficient of static friction cosine of theta is equal to sine of theta. We're looking for theta, so let's go ahead and divide by cosine static friction. So sine over cosine is tangent of theta. So then all I have to do is take inverse tangent, so inverse tangent uh, of coefficient of static friction is equal to theta. And then, so now we have this coefficient of static friction 0 0.4. 0 0.4. So plug this in, you're going to get theta is equal to, I don't have my notes, 21.8 degrees. And there you go. So that's the answer to your problem. So basically, yeah, we have three unknowns. So you have to continue solving until things cancel out. In this equation, we got lucky, and it canceled out, so nice. Uh, yeah, so that's how you solve this kind of problem. Not too tricky. Uh, just make sure you draw your force body diagram correctly, and just uh, keep track of everything. So there you go. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.